Hello, 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 hello. Welcome back. I thought I would talk to you guys today about how I find parking when sleeping in my car. And that's it. Right now, my car looks like a mess in the back, and that's okay because I just finished my trip. Well, I still have four hours left to drive, but my like sleeping part is done. And so yeah, that's what I want to talk to you guys about. Let's do it. So my first trip ever was to Northern Quebec, just like I'm doing right now. I went to Tadasac with a friend and it was our first road trip where we slept in the car. We did it mostly just to save money. And I didn't really think much about where am I gonna park? We were just like, we'll find somewhere that we feel comfortable. And that's what we did. Through that trip, our go-to ended up being churches. So we would park in the back of a church or like beside a church or something um throughout the night and then wake up at like six in the morning and look at the sunrise and then head up and that just became like our go-to um whenever we couldn't find somewhere to park we would just go on google maps look up a church go there and park there now, i don't know if you're allowed to do that technically but that seemed like a pretty good option at the time my second big trip was to a few of the states um in the new england kind of section there we kind of slept at a few different places the first night we slept at a uh, a rest stop and I don't know, no one tapped on our window. We were able to sleep through the night. There was no problem. The second night we slept at, I think we slept in a residential area on the street, which was a little bit more nerve wracking because we could see people walking by and we could hear them walking by and we didn't have window covers. So that was a little bit more nerve wracking, but I have done that. And then I don't know if there was a third night, but I imagine it was either at a church or on a residential street or at a pit stop, one of those three. The next trip I did was Kingston, or maybe that was the second trip, I don't really remember. But for that trip, what I did was I slept once again on a residential street. Apparently I do that quite often and I don't think it's legal. And I don't think people would appreciate it very much if they woke up and saw someone sleeping in their car outside their house. But thankfully, I wake up really early, so hopefully not, it's not a problem, and hopefully I won't get too many heat comments for it. <laughs> my next trip was to Alberta. No, my next trip was to Arizona and California. And so for that trip, the first night we stayed in Sedona, and we couldn't find anywhere to park. And I think there's such a thing as land that's like federally, federal owned land that you can park your car on. And it's like really nice and stuff. I heard about that in Mariah Alice's videos. I didn't know that existed back then. So we ended up parking in, well, in back of a CVS. So basically a pharmacy. Good morning, boo boo. Warning. And once again, I don't know if that's legal, but we felt safe there. Nobody warned us or came to our window and told us to leave. And I don't know, ended up being a really good night's sleep. The second night we were near the Grand Canyon and we, once again, this is probably, this, is, this isn't right. I don't know why I'm making a video about this. But what we did was we were looking for parking for a really long time. We couldn't find any. And then we kind of drove into an RV park with the intentions to pay for a spot. But the reception was closed and there was just a bunch of free spots so we just left our car there like parked the car there and slept there and left early in the morning <laughs> <laughs> good morning handsome hey. oh yeah we're driving in norway park that's why i parked i'm gonna get heat in this video for sure the next night was when we were in la and we slept on a residential street again <sighs> Good morning, boo-boo. morning. Surprise, surprise. And the next time, the next day after that, we were in Palm Springs. And again, we slept on the, on the residential street. I don't know. Like, it just works. If it works, it works. We stayed there. And then that was it. That was the end of our trip. As for Alberta and BC, first night in Alberta, where did we sleep? Oh, yeah. The first night in Alberta, we actually pulled over off the highway. There was a bunch of RVs and van life people sleeping in their cars there. And it was really late at night. So we just pulled over there and slept there as well. First night. Mm hmm.
it was really um like it wasn't planned like we just went and we saw a perfect place so we parked there okay so the night after that i was in jasper i believe and i slept we were planning to sleep at the parking lot of a train station but then someone peed on our car shaking right now because he's just ran up to work with the car, pissed on it, and they didn't know we were inside of it. And Jeremy banged on the window, and then they ran away, but we saw them run away back to a restaurant. And we went up to them, and we were like, what the f***? And they're like, it wasn't us. And we we're like, we just saw you run back here. Like, if you haven't seen that video, it will be up here. And so we decided to sleep on a residential street again, and it turned out fine. And then after that, we went to BC, and in BC, we slept on residential street again. He's still sleeping. And from there, I don't know if I was there longer, but if I was, we probably slept on residential streets. So I guess my answer is most of the time when I'm with somebody else, I sleep on residential streets unless there's a very obvious location where van people or RVs are parked. And this is not necessarily legal, I don't think. I'm not really sure if it's legal. I think it's legal in certain states, but not in other states. And I don't know. I don't know. One day I'll get a knock on the door and someone will tell me to move and then I'll be able to tell you guys. Or I'm sure I'm gonna get a bunch of people in the comments being like, you're not allowed to do that. And if you're one of those people who is like gonna Karen me, please don't do that. Please don't, like, it's not cool. Yeah, that's kind of like where I park. Recently I found out too that there's a thing called Eye Overlanding, I think it's called, and it's an app. And you can actually go on the map. On the app, there's a map. And you can look up like kind of where you're going and see different spots where you're legally allowed to park overnight and people leave photos and reviews so that you can know if it's safe or not. I haven't used it yet though. I will let you know once I do use it, if I like it. But yeah, that's also an option if you wanna do that, like park legally. And then this time I used a campground or stayed at a campground just because I was alone and I wanted to feel a little bit safer. I can't get over this view. That's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope that answered your question. If you're wondering where should you park if you want to do this. Um, I was winging it for a really long time. This is the only trip where I didn't wing it. And in the future on trips by myself, I will use eye overlanding. Um, if I'm with someone else, then I will wing it because it's fun and I like it. <laughs> All right, I hope you guys have a great day. Bye. In the snow, like a torch near me.